Hey, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, webinar two of two for uh, the Cisco SDA training uh, for partner pre-sales engineers. Um, today is April 29th, and um, as you may remember, if you were attended part one, uh, we had some delays that uh, pushed us off into this week. So again, thank you for sticking with us. And um, without further ado, I'm going to uh, talk to you about the Voice of the Engineer and Tech Talk series. This is a, a, uh, a part of a fourth week of the series. Uh, typically, we do the first week of the month, we do access, switching, and mobility. The second week, we do SD-WAN and routing. Third week, we do solution uh, type, um, you know, DNA center, SDA, ICE, that sort of thing. And then we reserve the fourth week of the month uh, for special series such as the, the, the one we're um, presenting today. Um, I recommend that uh, you all take, uh, take part in the series. Uh, we have lots of great content um, coming at you on a regular basis. Uh, the page, the Sales Connect page, which ultimately this content, all of this content will be posted in and converted to MP4 and, um, and the slides will be there. It will be it is the Sales Connect page you see there. I will post these links, by the way, in the um, in the chat uh, after I'm done speaking. And then uh, to to get you the the content uh, very quickly, because the the Sales Connect takes a little bit to process. I tend to post all of the material. We post all the material on the partner community, uh, which is that link below there at the very bottom. So. Um, after the, or sometime during this call or towards the end of this call, I will be posting today's content on uh, the partner community and then um, ultimately the MP4 and the, the, entire, the entire set of, of content will be on the Sales Connect page. All right, uh, to, to, um, again, the panelists will be answering the questions in the Q&A panel, so please make sure that anything related to the content that's that will be presented uh, related to SDA uh, that you put in the Q&A so our panelists can see it. And then, um, and then make sure that if, you have, if you're having some problems with the WebEx, that uh, please reserve that for the chat section. Um, we uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, with that, uh, I wanted to introduce our speakers. Uh, today's speakers are, um, you know, uh, Salman Asadula and uh, Umer from uh, Umer Shad from uh, Netnology. Uh, Salman is a former Cisco Distinguished Engineer and leads the engineering team at Netnology. Umer is a former Cisco Network Consulting Engineer um, and now a senior solutions architect focused on <clears throat> software-defined technologies. Both Salman and Umer are well-known industry experts and Cisco Live Hall of Fame speakers. With that, I want to uh, pass the ball over to uh, Salman. And uh, Salman, please do remember to unmute yourself. Perfect. And take it away, sir. Perfect. Hey, uh, Vic, thanks a lot uh, for the uh, intros. And uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, um, everybody, wherever you're joining from. Um, uh, as Vic mentioned, my name is Salman Asadullah. Uh, I'll uh, kick off. T this is uh, the second webinar. Uh, we had a really great turnout and great discussion in the first webinar. Um, if you remember, like um, when I kicked off the event uh, last time, uh, we had like three slides about our company as well. So I can we can went in a little bit of details about what we do. Um, and uh, again, uh, the idea is uh, to uh, really kind of um, the audience, the majority of the audience for this webinar is the VAR community and the value-added resellers and their pre-sales uh, engineers, post-sales engineers. Um, so it's very important for them to understand what is a role of a services-only partner, integrator partner, learning partner in, in this ecosystem. And that's what we kind of talked about last time. Um, so if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about us, uh, get into uh, basically um, uh, the last recording, uh, the initial three slides in the first webinar. But again, 
Uh, we are services only partner uh, and we call ourselves a full stack system integrator because we are a bunch of CCIs and DevOps engineers. So we know uh, how to kind of go up and down in the stack. And our focus area is mainly um, Cisco SDX technologies. So SDA in campus and branch, Viptela in the van and ACI in the data center and all the automation, integration, deployments, uh, workshops around these um, three key solutions. So, um, and again, keep in mind that when I say services only, we do not sell any hardware or software. We are purely services uh, company. So, so basically with that, uh, let me just kind of, you know, um, go into um, uh, putting things in perspective. So I'm not sure how many of you are returning um, uh, attendees and some, some of you maybe uh, uh, are here for the fir uh, first time, could not join the, uh, the initial uh, webinar. But keep in mind that uh, this the idea of this whole webinar is to kind of provide you uh, enough information being a pre-sales engineer in a multi-vendor partner environment to give you enough information that you can talk about SDA solution, position it, and demo the key functionalities um, of the solution. And then once that piece is done, uh, help your account teams uh, to, uh, to build how to build the bomb and the sow uh, and helping them closing the deal, right? Because the idea is, is uh, uh, we used to be um, a part of Cisco in the past, and then now we are in the partner's shoes. So we have so, sort of kept this whole idea of life of a partner pre-sales engineer in mind while building this thing. And again, why are we doing this uh, session? Because of two key reasons. Um, uh, we are Cisco SDX uh, experts uh, focusing on these three technologies. And we are among um, uh, three go-to partners uh, for the BU, working on SDA and deployments, uh, early deployments for uh, from a long time. And we are among the Mint partners. Uh, when Mint is basically, uh, if you do a quick search on Cisco Mint, M-I-N-T partners, uh, you'll see that there are six global partners who are, who are there to help with the mentored stalls and POVs for some of these cutting edge solutions, we are one of those partners. So uh, with that, um, if you remember where we sort of started um, this whole uh, webinar um, last week, uh, this whole content is built around why, what, and how. So we talked about in the module one, why SDA, and then we talked about uh, in module two, to what is SDA? So we get, got into the key components of uh, the solution. And then from module three, we started on how piece. Okay, I understand why, I understand what, but now show me uh, or tell me how I'm going to demo, demo the solution. How does it work? What are the key uh, uh, differentiations of the solution? And that's where we started to look into the uh, uh, we have decided to work on three, show you three demos, which are instant demos. Uh, so basically, uh, I we have covered the first demo, uh, design and provision. Uh, today we'll go into the uh, segmentation demo and the assurance demo, followed by again the how piece, how to build. Once the customer is good, happy, they understand why, what, and how. Now your account team want wants you to help them build the sow, build the bomb and try to extend the deal and bring that sow piece, the services piece uh, into the whole uh, deal. So we're gonna sh uh, show you how to kind of do that. And then um, we'll come back and uh, wrap up the whole uh, webinar series in the module five. So with that, uh, I'll uh, hand this over uh, to uh, my colleague uh, Umair Arshad, who's going to uh, continue with the, the demo two and demo three, followed by uh, the module four. Uh, Umair, uh, it's all yours. Thank you, Salman. Thank you, Vic. I hope everyone had a good weekend. 
as Salman mentioned. In the last demo, we talked about why SDA, what is SDA. We showed you some of the aspects of the solution. We presented the first demo that was more about design and design specifically. How you design or how you start to design your environment, how we create hierarchy when it comes to SDA, how we build everything, how we combine all the dots together. In today's session, we are going to start with the first demo, which is going to be segmentation. Segmentation is the key component. Segmentation is nothing, but think of it as you are creating more VLANs or you are creating VRF. We will be doing it from Cisco SDA environment. We will be doing it from the DNA controller. Then we get into assurance piece. We did talk about it a little bit in the last session. Okay, we have the solution. We have the implementation piece done. Now, how would I monitor it? How would I get insights into what is happening in my environment? And then we're going to get into build up bill of material, statement of work, and Salman will end the session with key takeaways. <clears throat> Having said that, just to do a quick recap, in the last session we did demo on design, where we showed you how you create a hierarchy, how you add locations, how you add site, how we do the provisioning piece. Provisioning has two main components besides many other functions that it does. The two main things that we wanted you to remember when it comes to provisioning was assigning devices to a site, and doing the provisioning. What provisioning does, it pushes out all of the settings to the respective devices. Now today we're going to look at the second piece of it is segmentation. When we look at the segmentation piece, it is about doing a micro segmentation and macro segmentation. How it will be done, this is what we're going to see and we are going to demonstrate what those different components are and how it all comes together. Let me go ahead, share my screen. I'm going to show you guys a quick demo on segmentation. We're going to go to dcloud. We're going to log into DNA Center. The credentials are demo, demo, one, two, three, four, exclamation. When we log in, we see these five tabs on the top. Design, Policy, Provision, Assurance, Platform. Last week, we talked about design. How you create a hierarchy. How you create your sites, your campus environment. We talked about provisioning. Once we have done the design piece, we have done the site discovery. Now we have all these devices showing up like this. We need to assign them to a site. The second piece that provisioning does is push out settings. What about my DHCP settings, my DNS, my NTP, my AAA? Provision, when we provision a device, it is going to push those settings out to that particular device. Today we are going to start with segmentation piece. When we talk about segmentation, we look at policy. <clears throat> when we go into the policy section, we see different tabs here on the dashboard, group-based ACL, IP-based ACL, application, traffic copy, virtual network, and then we have all these blue rectangles showing different numbers. Let's talk about what these numbers and how these numbers get here. We did talk about ICE integration with Cisco DNA. We did mention ICE is one of the most key components for Cisco SD architecture and solution. If we did not have ICE integrated, we can still create design, we can still do provisioning. As I said, the main purpose for provisioning is push settings out, assign devices to a location. I still can do it, no issues with that. However, without ICE integration, we cannot define any policies, we cannot create any policies. Once we integrate ICE into Cisco DNA, we get virtual networks, we get group-based ACLs, we get scalable groups. All of the work that we do here will get integrated with ICE. Without ICE integration, we will not see anything over here. 
we are going to create virtual networks over here on this screen, but it will get integrated with ICE. Scalable groups. When we integrate with ICE, we get 16 scalable groups by default. Then we create more scalable groups based on our requirements, our needs, what customers are looking for. We define contracts based on customer needs and requirements. Either do a permit, deny, or we can create custom contracts. Similarly for the group-based ACLs. All of this can be done only and only when ICE is integrated. Without ICE integration, we cannot create SGTs, we cannot create group-based ACLs, we cannot push any of the security settings to the device. ICE is the main and the key component in order for us to make sure the solution is deployed securely. So what we're going to look at today in this demo, we are going to create virtual networks. We are going to create a policy for a micro segmentation within that particular virtual network. And then we are going to define a contract. A contract is nothing but either you permit or you deny. You can permit all, you can deny all, or we can say we only want to permit traffic on a certain port number or a certain protocol. This is what we're going to demonstrate. Now, the very first thing, in order for us to apply any, any configuration policy, we have to have a virtual network. When we go into policy, we get these two virtual networks by default. Infra VN is used for access points when we have the wireless deployment because access points, they still require to build a cap wrap tunnel. They still need to go and talk to the controllers. They would use the infra VN, virtual network, infra underscore virtual network. Default VN, it is there by default. We don't do anything, we, we don't touch it. So what we're gonna do here, we're going to create a virtual network. And then we're going to apply policies inside that virtual network. So we're gonna create a virtual network called IoT. We all are familiar, Internet of Things is a big thing today. Everyone is catching, everyone is trying to move towards IoT. The challenge is within IoT, how we, making, how we are making sure we are keeping everything secure. So we're going to have two SGTs, one for HVAC, one for lights, and let me add another one, a third one for vending machines. All three belong to IoT community. So we have created a virtual network. Now we have created groups, three groups in that same virtual network. I will go ahead and do a save. It is going to create my virtual network. My virtual network is created. If I click on my IoT, you can see we have three groups assigned to my IoT network. Now let's go and create micro segmentation between the devices. We're going to go to group-based ACL. I'm going to create a new policy. Now, when we get to the policy section, we see here different fields. We have a policy name, we have a contract. With the red asterisk, it indicates both fields are required. Without having a policy name, obviously we cannot have a policy. Without having a contract, we cannot apply the policy. So let's go ahead and create a policy here first. I'm going to say I want to deny communication between HVAC and lights is GT. So we created a policy name. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a contract here. As you can see, by default, we see deny and a permit. We can create our own custom contracts if we want to. For now, I'm just going to select deny, just for the purposes of a demonstration. Now, if you see here, within the policy, we have a source and a destination. Remember, we are doing a micro segmentation right now because we have one virtual network, IoT. Within that virtual network, we're trying to deny communication between lights and HVAC. If you all remember, we have been using ACL for a long, long time. This is exactly the same thing that we do in an ACL. We define a source, we define a destination. In our ACLs, this is the same thing we are doing here. The difference is 
now we are using drag and drop. We are making DNA. We are using the intelligence of Cisco DNA to do all that work in the background for us. Once we create this, this, this policy, DNA Center is going to apply that policy for us. It is going to integrate with ICE. ICE is going to push out that policy to the end devices for us. So let's go ahead and I want to say that my HVAC is going to be the source. My lights is going to be my destination here. So my source is HVAC. My destination is lights. Let's go ahead, save the policy. It will always give you a message, a polite message, a warning that do you want to save the policy changes? We're going to say yes. And we have a policy which has been created successfully. So it's as simple as that, creating a policy. We can see here, a policy is created, it is being deployed. So it is so simple to go ahead, create a policy. If I click on my policy here, I can see here my source is HVAC, my destination is lights, my contract is saying deny. I don't want to have any conversation between HVAC and lights. If we have to go back and make a change, we can again go back, hit edit. I can go ahead and I can say, okay, you know what? Let's create a new access contract, for instance. And now we're going to create a custom contract. So you see the flexibility. If you all remember, when we are creating ACLs, we have to go to the CLI, say no to it, then go back, make the modification, then do all the changes. It was a whole lot of work. Here, all I'm going to say here, I'm now coming here, I'm saying, okay guys, what I want to do, I want to permit everything. However, we want to deny HTTP traffic. That's what we want to do. So I'm just going to give it a description here, deny HTTP traffic. When we search here, it will show us port or protocol. I'm going to put HTTP in here. Slash port 80. Go ahead and hit save. We create the contract successfully. Deny HTTP traffic. And here we have a policy. If I want to go back and edit this policy again, I can still go back and make edits to it. So the point is, is the power of Cisco DNA. How flexible the solution is, how easy it is to go back make modifications, make changes. When we go back to a policy here, we can see that it is showing on the screen, we have, nine, we have three virtual networks now. If I click on it, I'm going to see my IoT right here. And there are three available SGTs within my, within my virtual network IoT. This was an example of a micro segmentation, what we demonstrated. In the third demo, in the next demo, we are going to look at our fourth tab, which is assurance. So to recap what we have done so far, we have looked at the design tab. What does design tab do? We create hierarchy. We define our network settings and design. We create network profiles if we have wireless line controllers. We create our authentication templates if applicable. Then we go to policy. We define our virtual networks in policy. We define micro or macro segmentation based on the customer environments within policy. We create a group based ACLs. We create contracts. Contract is nothing but a permit or a deny, whether to a specific port or for a specific protocol. We looked at provisioning. There are many functions that provisioning does. The two main things, the two main components are assigning a device to a site and provisioning. Provisioning push all of the network settings that we saw in the design section to that particular device. It has other, other functions as well. Resync the device, update operating system image, or you can delete a device. Now we are going to look at the fourth component, 
which is assurance. We did talk about this briefly. Why assurance? What is assurance? We have deployed the solution. It's being implemented. Now we want to figure out, okay, what is happening in my network? What is my network health? How is my network operating? I want to have some stats, both at a high level, at an executive level, or both from an engineer's perspective. As we deploy the solution, the network continues to grow. Complexity is, is natural. It's natural that it will become a little bit more complex as the time grows. Device count will increase. It will become a little bit difficult to manage manually. This is where we have assurance. What assurance does, it helps with reactive troubleshooting, proactive troubleshooting. We have telemetry, which gives you insight as to what is happening when you are on your assurance portal. Now, we are going to quickly look at a user which is having some issues. Right now, if you look at our network health, it's looking pretty good. Wide network, 98%, wireless network, 90%. It shows us router, core, access, controller, all of these count. And it shows us what the score is, what, how everything looks like. And you can see here, any of the issues that DNAC thinks is there, there is an issue, it marks it as P1 or P2 or a P3. When you click on that severity, it tells you what, why. Why it is marked as P1, what issue is happening. Here we can see here, there's a connectivity failure between the fabric to the other fabric border and the control node. Yeah, that is a big issue. If an edge node cannot talk to a border or control node, anything behind that edge node is dead. Yeah, that is a severity one, a P1 case right there. And the main reason you can see here, the interface actually is up down, going to both the border nodes. Gig 105 is an up down state, so is gig 1014. So it might be that either the fiber is loose, the connections are not there, somebody connected to the wrong port, there can be multiple reasons for that. But we know where the problem is. The problem is on the edge node because the interfaces are up down. So it can be a transceiver, fabric, cabling, wrong connection. We know where the problem is. That is the beauty of assurance. You look at it, you immediately know where to start, where to look for. So let's take a look at one of the users which is having some issues. So let's just start with the global issues. Let's see what's happening at the global level. We can see there are many things happening at the global level. All of these issues which are coming in, so many issues. And we can see some of them are P3, some of them are P1s, some of them are P2s. DNAC prioritizes those issues based on what it thinks is more, se is more severe compared to the others. Now, we have a user which is having issues when it comes to connecting to her iPad. She is having issues. She's able to connect. However, then she gets disconnected. And she's trying to figure out what is happening here. She's trying to understand why she's having issues from her iPad. However, she can connect to the wireless network just fine from her PC. So we're going to take a quick look at what is happening and why she's struggling to connect to the SSID. So if you see here, okay, wireless client took a long time to connect, experiencing RF issues, all right. Okay, again, wireless issues continue to happen. So we see here, there's a whole list that the wireless issues continue to happen here as I drill down. Now, if I go up, there was right here. This was an important one. Failed to authenticate due to client timeout. Okay, this is an interesting one. So we know where the user is. If you see here, where the site is, North America, USA, California, San Jose, SGC01, and the first floor. So this is where the user is. San Jose, building one, floor one. For some reason, 
she is failing to connect. And it seems like something probably to do with authentication. Let's see if we have an issue with authentication. So her name is Grace. Now, when we see here on the screen, we can immediately see she has three devices, a PC, an iPad, and an iPhone. So we're gonna select our user Grace. As I described, she's having issues with her iPad. Her PC and her phone seems to be working fine. So we're going to select our user Grace, and we're going to go to user 360. Once you go to user 360, after selecting the user, the key is we selected the user first, and that showed us, okay, how many devices she has, and we, it took us to that user page. Now, on one screen, I have her iPad, I have her iPhone, I have her PC. Again, this is so powerful that in one screen, I'm seeing everything that that user has on this network. All the devices that this user has on the network with their operating system, MAC address, IP address, which VLAN they're connected to, what is their status, when that user was last seen just a minute ago, and where that user is connecting. You see the power? We selected the user only, and we get so much information already about that user in one line. A lot of times we start with, okay, so user is having issues with authentication. Okay, let's figure out, can she ping? Can she do this? Can she do browse? Can she reach out to internal applications or not? Where she is connected? I mean, just looking at assurance piece, we are able to see she's in San Jose building one, floor one. This is the access point that she's connected to. This is her IP address. Imagine how much time did it save. Just to get to this information in a legacy environment, in a traditional network, it takes some time to understand, put all of this together. Here on the screen, we are seeing everything live as to what is happening. We see it immediately. Now, as I described, she's having issues with her iPad. It seems like her iPad is connected. This is her device health. We see green, some yellow, some red, and there's a lot of red in here. So it seems like there is something going on. She seems to be fine, but then all of a sudden she goes down. So let's look at the client health score. If you notice here, as I am moving my mouse on the bottom left, the client health is changing. This is an indicator of how client is doing. Higher number represents a good healthy client. If we get down to a value of three, two, or one, it represents something is not right. Now, for instance, if I come here, I select this. I hovered my mouse over to client health one. I clicked on it and I see here what is happening. So we can see the connection details over here as you go down here. What is the channel? What is the band? Okay, it's a DHCP. We can see full list. Let's click on that. And we can see she's on VLAN 120. It seems like she's able to connect to wireless line controller fine though. But as we go down, we can see that yes, she's connecting to wireless line controller. We don't see any issues there. So that piece seems to be working okay. So at least she is not having an issue over there. But now if we scroll up, it seems like she's connecting, but then something is happening as she leaves the wireless line control. Let's take a look at all the issues that she has experienced over here. There are five issues that she's experienced. We saw some of those issues, RF issues. Then we saw that it was taking too long to connect. Then as soon as she's able to get an IP address, which is great news. So DHCP connectivity is good. She gets an IP address, she connects to the wireless and controller. The problem is right here, failure to authenticate. Let's click on that. When we go down and click on failure to authenticate, 
right here. The client failed to complete authentication during onboarding because the wireless line controller did not receive a response from the client during authentication message exchange. Quite likely, her iPad is not supposed to be on the corporate network. That is the issue here. And you can see here the sequence, sequence what is happening and some of the suggestions that DNAC would give you. This is not something that you would see with every in every day in your legacy network when, okay, there is a problem. Okay, we know what the problem is. Okay, what are the suggestions to fix it? The very first thing we all ask, even when we call Cisco Tech and we know what are the problems, we ask them, what do you think? How do you think I can fix this problem? DNA is giving us the suggestions here. That's the beauty of it. It is not only pointing us to the root cause of the problem, it is also suggesting how the problem can be fixed. Okay, there's an authentication failure. You need to look at if the profile matches with what the triple authentication server is, if her iPad is supposed to be on the network or not. So you can see, I mean, in one screen, we're not only able to see where she is connected, her all the information, we're also able to see what the root cause of the problem was, and we are also able to get suggestions from DNAC, where to start, what do we need to look in order to fix the problem. Now, we know this problem, we fixed it, we went back to Grace and we told her, it is probably because your iPad was not supposed to be on the network, this is the problem that you're having. Now, she's another problem right now. She's saying, okay, thank you for the help. I appreciate all the help. I appreciate a quick response. Now I'm having another problem. I cannot print from my computer. I can browse. I can go to the internet. I can reach all of my corporate applications, both wired and wirelessly. No issues there. However, I just cannot print. I don't understand why. My computer is on the network, but I cannot print. So let's go and see what's happening. We go to her PC. We know it's a Linux workstation. This is the OS version it's running. This is the MAC address, her IPv4 address. She's on VLAN 120. And again, we can see that she's connected. No issues there. Compared to her iPad, her PC is showing it's in good health. Now, if you look at her onboarding, we can see that she's pretty green. She's connecting to the wireless line controller via the access point. This all looks good. Now, the issue is, it seems like something is happening on the wireless line controller. Now, when we are looking at a wired computer, one of the things we always want to do is, we all want to do a trace route just to see, can we reach internet? Or if we, are going, if we are trying to print, where that printer is connected, how the traffic path looks like, are we reaching the printer? Do we have reachability issues there? So let's go ahead and take a look. If we have some reachability issues, I'm going to go ahead and do a trace out. In DNA, we call it path trace. It is nothing but a trace route. So let's go ahead and run a trace route. My source IP is my PC, Grace PC, 10.30. Dot 100, dot 20. My destination is going to be my printer, which is on 10.31.100.12. Let's go ahead and do a quick trace. As you can see, here's a trace out. We went from dot 20 to an access point, to the wide machine, to the edge node, then we went to floor two building access. Then building one X floor, building one floor two access. Hmm, that's all. There's an ACL on the next edge node. So something is not right. So we know there is an ACL. So let's see what this ACL is doing. Let's try to inspect that ACL. So if you go ahead and inspect that ACL immediately. I just hover my mouse over that ACL and we can see what is happening. 
traffic coming in, but traffic that is leaving on 10 gig 101, it is denying VLAN 120. Again, if you go back, remember her PC was on VLAN 120, if you remember right here, her PC is connected to VLAN 120. Now, when she's trying to print on VLAN 120, she's getting denied. And that perfectly explains why she's able to browse the internet, access all the applications, however she's unable to print, is because the VLAN is denied, going towards the printer. So you can see the power of assurance and telemetry. We looked at two issues. One is Grace iPad. Second is her PC. Her iPad was unable to connect to the corporate network. Within a few minutes, we were able to identify the root cause. It was triple authentication, which was stopping her from joining the network. Second issue is with her printing. She was unable to print anything. We did a path trace or a trace route in our traditional world, and we're immediately able to see there was an ACL in the path which was blocking any traffic going out on VLAN 120. In traditional world, this, this kind of troubleshooting takes some time. It will take some time to figure out and understand where the problem might be and why it is happening. Here, in a matter of last 10, 15 minutes, we looked at two issues, we were able to identify two issues, we were able to solve two issues. That is the power of assurance and telemetry in Cisco DNA. That concludes our demo for the assurance component. We are going to go back to the slide decks now. And we're going to go ahead and start looking at our module four. So far, what we have done and what we have learned is what is SDA, why we use SDA, how it looks like, how everything comes together, how would I design my network inside Cisco DNA, how would I provision my campus? How would I create security policies from DNA controller? How would I monitor my network after it is designed and implemented? The most important piece that brings everything together is the accounting. They are the ones who, do the, who does the bill of material and they sit with the architects to build a statement of work based on the custom questionnaire. We did review some of the customer requirements in our last session. Here we will be sharing some examples of cust customer's questionnaire. How to ask questions, how to create some high level design documents after the bill of material is done before getting to the implementation phase. So let's quickly take a look at the bill of material. Now, in order to, to have a bill of material, there are some key components. We need to understand what customer is looking for, what outcome are they looking for. We all know it's so exciting to get to the new technology. It is so exciting to go ahead and deploy something new. At the same time, we have to have realistic expectations. We need to make sure we are giving customer the right tools. But at the end of the day, it is their network. Once it is designed and implemented, they will be the ones managing it with the help of Cisco Advanced Services or with some other partner services. But they need to understand their network better. Based on the customer response, based on what they want, based on the outcome desired, a bill of material will be defined. So let's look at some of the examples. What we need to understand, is it a greenfield or a brownfield deployment? With Cisco SDA, 
we certainly do not want to create disruption in the network. So we need to understand if it is a brownfield network, what applications are they running? What is going to be the impact when we would look to move users from brown from the current environment to the new SDA environment? If it's greenfield, obviously, it, that makes things a lot more easier. We need to understand how many fabric sites. We need to understand, are they looking to do wireless integration? Or are they looking to use wireless as over-the-top deployment model? We did talk about this a little bit in our last session. We can do fabric-enabled wireless, or we can do over-the-top integration. With fabric-enabled wireless, we integrate wireless line controllers with Cisco DNA. We create SSIDs in Cisco DNA. We create network profile in Cisco DNA. With over-the-top, fabric is transparent. It just becomes a transit fabric. The access point will go talk to the wireless and controller in the traditional world. We need to understand if customers are looking to do ICE, if they already have ICE in the network, are they familiar with ICE? Do they know and do they understand the concept of PAN nodes versus PSN nodes, service node versus the administration nodes? Do they want to do a physical ICE appliance or are they okay with using the ICE VMs? Same thing goes for the wireless line controllers. Are they looking to use physical wireless line controllers or are they looking to use virtual wireless line controllers? For instance, 9800s, C9800s, which are virtual wireless line controllers. Understand the requirements. Understand the traffic flow. What is the traffic flow requirement? How much traffic today they have in the network? What kind of growth are they expecting? Brief them on the licensing. Make sure customer understands licenses. For instance, with ICE, it is node-based license. If our user, Grace, she has three devices, that's three ICE licenses. If she's going to, be have, going to have all three devices on the network, that's three ICE, ICE node licenses. Make sure customer understands and they're aware of how this whole thing looks like. Now understand, are they looking to do a standalone DNA versus a cluster deployment? Fusion routers, we highly, highly recommend to have a redundant pair of fusion router. Because we need to understand, we can have as much redundancy as possible in the fabric when the traffic hits the fusion router. If we have only one single fusion router, that is a single point of failure. Make sure customer understands and they realize Fabric is good. All the traffic is coming up north. It is going through the fusion router. If we have only one fusion router, something happens to that device, anything and everything below that fusion router is out. That's an outage. We don't want that. No one wants that kind of a scenario. Make sure they understand the requirement for a highly available requirement. They understand what HA actually is. Understand if they're looking to use edge nodes. How many edge nodes are they looking to use? Are they looking to use stacks? Make sure they understand how many users per floor, have some room for growth, those kind of things. Now, depending on the customer response, we can go different ways. What we are sharing on the screen is just an example. A customer might come back and say, folks, I understand the solution. I know what I'm looking for. What I want to do, I want to do a proof of concept. I want to get it into my lab and I want to have a couple of nodes deployed just to see how the technology works. And I want to get familiar with the, with the technology first. I want to understand it first, be able to run it on my own before I take it into the production and they can take the exact environment into the production. So they might start with, okay, I want to do a one DNA in my proof of concept with two control nodes, border nodes, edge nodes, one diffusion router device, one ICE that is doing both PAN and PSN nodes function, couple of access points, a wireless line controller, couple of virtual networks, just for a data and voice, for instance, 
if, as if this is the easiest one to use. You can have a couple of phones connected, you can have a couple of test PCs connected in the lab. Make sure you have a leg into the production. See how they like it. Are they able to browse? Are they able to reach to the other applications? Are they able to monitor? Are they able to create some issues and see them from Cisco DNA? Or as a second option, customer might come back and say, okay, I'm pretty comfortable with the solution. You know what? Let's go ahead and deploy it in my campus. However, I don't want to boil the ocean. Let's do it only on one floor in my campus or two floors on my campus. I have about 100 or 200 users. Let's move those users onto the fabric, leave the rest of the campus as is. Depending on what customer is looking for, you would have to adjust your bill of material. So what we are sharing on the screen is just two examples as I said. It can vary depending on the customer requirement. We are, for instance, only showing two virtual networks. We can have more virtual networks. A printer typically goes into its own virtual network. IoT devices, for instance, cameras, security sensors, bad door badges, they would become part of the IoT virtual network. They can be more virtual networks depending on the customer needs and the outcome they're looking for. What we are showing on the screen is just an example of what customers might look for. Typically, customers are looking for the easiest way to start to understand the technology. Now, let's look at bill of material. This is where the, some of the understanding of customer outcome comes in and some customer education also is desired. For instance, we did talk about, the, we did talk about this a little bit in our first session, licensing. When customers are looking to deploy and build a fabric, they have to have a DNA Advantage license. So this is where the customer education comes in that, okay, you have a license for your environment. Now, in order for DNA to manage everything, to make sure we're still running smoothly, we're still building the fabric for both wired and the wireless environment, we have to have DNA Advantage license. And that is applicable to the wired infrastructure and to the wireless infrastructure equally. Wireless line controllers and access points also require the same kind of license in order for Cisco DNA to manage them. Understand how many nodes are they looking for? How many users do they have? And then build everything accordingly. For wireless, as I mentioned, understand their design requirements. Are they looking to use physical wireless line controllers? Are they looking to use virtual wireless line controllers? Even within virtual wireless line controllers, is it a small, medium, or large? How many access points? How their growth looks like? Understand all those needs and requirements. Understand the latency time. What latency time is desired by the customer? Now, getting to the bill of material, as I said, if we know, for instance, customers looking to do a small deployment, they have about 200 users. Okay, so they have about 200 users or probably 300 users at max, probably eight to 10 edge nodes. Catalyst 9300, 24 port or a 48 port with Cisco DNA Advantage license. Again, that is the key. Cisco DNA Advantage license is the key. This is subscription-based license. One year, three year, five year, seven year subscription. The customer needs to understand what this license is and how it will be used. So for example, we can pick a SKU for a Cisco DNA 24 port, or we can pick a SKU for 48 port. For the control plane, we can pick a 6500, or we can pick a 6800. We can combine our border node and control plane functionality into the same physical hardware as well. If customized network is not huge, is not big enough. Both of them can be combined, control plane nodes and the border nodes. We can probably use Catalyst 9500s or Nexus 7000. It's a good option where all of this can be combined depending on the customer needs and requirements. 
Same thing goes for the wireless nodes. ICE, as I mentioned, a lot of times customers don't realize, don't understand this piece. And we have seen this over and over again. When we are building an ICE SKU, customer thinks one user equals one license. And we always try to explain to them, no, this is not how it works. If I have a phone, I have a PC, I have a tablet, that's three licenses. Make sure customer understands this and build the bill of material accordingly, build the bomb accordingly. For a small proof of concept, probably a hundred node license is a good enough number to begin with. If we are looking to use ICE everywhere in the wide and the wireless infrastructure. Some customers, they do have a requirement to log down network all the way down to the host port, even for the wide infrastructure. Customers would like to do dot one X authentication to make sure they understand what it does and how it works. Most importantly, if they have, again, how many devices? Even in IoT devices, if customers looking to make IoT devices part of the small integration or small deployment, it is going to be an ICE licensed. If they have cameras, they have 10 cameras, that's 10 licenses. So what we are showing here is just an example of how to build ISQ description and then what are we looking to do with this. And we are showing the comparison for both the proof of concept and for limited deployment. Here are a couple of links. The top one is for the SDA ordering guide which has a wealth of information. It has every single component listed for both wide and the wireless infrastructure with the code versions, with the, all of the recommendations. Second link is for the promotions and incentives. What promotions, what incentives are available when doing a bill of material for the customer. If the account teams or the systems engineer, they need any help, they require any kind of support, Here's the link to Cisco pre-sales help page. Now let's take a quick look at building scope of work. So far we have talked about customer requirements. We did talk about bill of material as an example. Because of the duration of the session, we don't have enough time to go ahead and, and show a live CCW tool right now where we go in CCW and build, build uh, bill of material because we are short on time right now. So we just did this before the start of the session and then we had the screenshots, what we, how you can do it. Now let's look at a scope of work based on so everything that we have discussed so far. We talked about customer requirements. We talked about customer outcome. We talked about bill of material. Now all of this, has to translate into scope of work document. A scope of work document that all parties would agree upon as to what will be, what will be the responsibilities for both parties. Mr. Customer, Mr. Vendor. Whether it is Cisco, it is a partner. It has to be mutually agreed upon. What hardware will be part of it? What installations will be done? what will be deployed, how many virtual networks will be created, if ICE and wireless line controller setup is going to be part of a statement of work. A lot of times, customers are not familiar with wireless line controller and ICE. Make sure it is defined and explained if it is going to be part of a scope of work. Make sure, understand if it is a VM or it is a physical appliance for both ICE and wireless line controller. Put in the statement of work, how many virtual networks will be part of this statement of work? How many SGTs potentially that we will be working on? What kind of policies? How many policies potentially that will be part of this statement of work? A lot of times there are things that which are not in our control. Most of the time, 
we can do a good job of making sure we're defining those requirements up front. We're documenting them to the best of our understanding of customer requirements, customer desired outcome, and customer knowledge of the technology. And we, we all know things do change at times. However, if we have done a good enough job of documenting all the nitty gritty details, chances are those changes, those hiccups will be minor, nothing major. <clears throat> if a customer would like to get into assurance, they want to better understand after the design is complete, ICE integration is done, policy provisioning is complete, they would like to understand how to manage the network when it comes to assurance. Here are some of the key elements that you can train your customer on from assurance. Things like client 360 view. We looked at our user Grace from client 360 view. She had three devices. And we were able to look at all three devices. We were able to drill down and understand how she was operating those three devices, what was the information about each of those three devices and the issues that she was having. Understand path trace. We did demonstrate path trace. How we can do a trace route from Cisco DNA to see the end-to-end -end traffic flow. We were able to see how the traffic was going from point A to point B and where exactly our user Grace was having an issue. Health dashboard, we were able to see the whole environment statistics in one page, wired and wireless. So build a scope of work accordingly when it comes to assurance, what customer is looking for. Make them understand, teach them, educate them, enable them. That is the best thing we can do, enabling a customer. Because at the end of the day, they would need to run their own network. They need to have a good understanding of what is deployed in their own network. Now, after all of this is being done, before starting the implementation, it is always a good recommendation to have a high-level design created, a diagram, how the network would look like once it's all said and done, what services will run over that network. How many devices will be part of it? For instance, if you see here, this is a proof of concept where we are showing two edge nodes, two access points, couple of clients, and then one ICE node connecting into Cisco DNA. If you see here in this diagram, this is a limited deployment. If you see it in the bottom right, we have, we have 10 edge nodes, one through 10. A lot more clients, more access points. Make sure customer understands the difference between the two. Make sure everyone agrees on it. How, what will be the difference between a proof of concept versus a high level design? And how environment would look like? what virtual networks will be there. Just put high level information out there. There will be five virtual networks, for instance. Name them. There will be five or 10 policies. There will be ICE integration. There will be wireless LAN controller integration. Wireless LAN, control, wireless LAN controller will be fabric enabled wireless LAN controller. There will be three SSIDs that will be part of five fabric enabled wireless LAN controller. Put all those high level details in an HLD and get a sign off from the customer before proceeding. It would help in the implementation phase. But when it gets to the implementation phase, there will be less questions about why certain things are being done in a particular way. Why we are looking to do things one way versus the other. So this is upfront planning. If we spend some time on doing this kind of upfront planning, it will certainly reduce time when it comes to implementation phase. Again, in a summary, what we discussed today, we looked at our demo for 
we look at our demo for segmentation, we look at our demo for assurance, we looked at how to build a custom customer questionnaire, we looked at customer responses. Based on the customer response, we created a bill of material. Based on the customer responses and bill of material, we created a statement of work. Based on customer response, bill of material, and a statement of work, a high-level design document was created before the actual implementation phase. So you can see there was a hierarchy. There was a method. We started with customer requirements, understood customer environment, customer outcome. Based on the customer responses, we created a bill of material. Based on the hardware and the customer requirements, a statement of work was defined. And then based on all of these components, a high-level design document was created with the diagrams, with some high-level details as to how the network would look like in the future once implementation phase is complete. Before starting the actual implementation work. Now with that said, I will give it back to Salman for module five key takeaways. Salman, you want to take it back? Sure. Uh, great. Thank you, Mer. Thank you, Mer. Uh, appreciate uh, uh, kind of uh, explaining uh, the the demos and the the module for the how to build the bomb in the south. So with that, uh, what I will go into uh, wrapping up this webinar series uh, with the module five. What are the key takeaways uh, and um, so in this uh, module, we're going to talk about the key takeaways and some of the references and next steps. Uh, so here, if you remember where we sort of started, um, this is a, a slide which you also saw in the module one. And the idea is that if you remember what we talked about and some of the folks maybe have not attended the uh, were not able to attend the first mo uh, module or the first webinar the idea is that what we are seeing that there are three key areas um, IT managers or the folks are telling us about their networks they're complex to manage they're difficult to segment and they're slow res issue resolution when the any things happen and if you see in this webinar series, we kind of focused on these three areas. This is where our three demos were tied uh, as well. So while you're, we understand you're a, a partner pre-sales engineer dealing with multiple vendors, multiple solutions, our hope is to, with these three demos and uh, with these, uh, all this information which is provided around it, very focused, we have shown you how to kind of provide the value of SDA and even kind of demonstrating it. The great thing about these demos is um, they are all instant demos. So you don't have to book it. You don't have to do anything. You just go and kind of once you're at the customer site, you can go and uh, take care of that. Now, another key uh, areas, again, uh, what we kind of saw in this whole SDA solution, there are three key areas. One is that identity-based policy and segmentation. So keep in mind that as networks get more complex, it's cumbersome to get devices and users onboarded on the right network and with the right credentials seamlessly. Today, in most of the cases, we live in the CLI-driven world. We have a bunch of CCIs, we love our CLI. But that allows us to define consistent policy but just once with this whole idea of sda what you really saw that you can associate a policy to the specific groups with no dependency on vlans and ip addresses you can also define one consistent policy and that policy follows the users from the edge to the cloud better yet you don't have to deal with policy violations and error manually so you saw all of this stuff about identity-based identity policy and segmentation in action 
in this webinar series. The second thing is around automated network fabric. So if you saw that usually the common complaint we get from the IT managers is that they have to get set policy for wired and wireless separately. And uh, in this case, you saw that with SDA, not only does the policies you set follow the user, it provides consistent management across wired and wire wireless through a single fabric for campus-wide roaming and simplified provisioning. You saw that in action. Last but not least, um, the insight and telemetry. The S you saw that SDA provides analytics and telemetry information to monitor and improve network overall network health the and this information um, they collect and provide significantly reduces troubleshooting time and helps all the the executives or you know the IT departments make informed decisions because you're collecting all of this information you have it's not only about uh, saying certain things but not able to back up with real data here you can really back up things with the real data so all the information you saw is, is aggregated into a single platform you don't need to look at various separate chunks uh, anymore to different dashboards and all of that sort of stuff which you see in multiple solutions uh, everything exists on one platform and that's the dnac right so and again you saw this thing in action as well with that um, this was one of the key areas when you're talking to your customers uh, these are some real numbers you can show uh, and uh, the study which is done around the sda solution that how it really kind of addresses those key uh, areas or the issues what we have been hearing from the customers that how it, this whole solution improve improves that uh, improves in these areas With that, um, we'll get into some of the references and next steps. Again, putting all of these things in one place. As I, if you remember that in this webinar series, we have sort of kept it very focused because we want to, we understand that we want to give you enough information so you can help your account teams and do what you need to do uh, for SDA solution. However, some of you are also post sales engineers in this training who might want to continue increasing in their knowledge around the SDA solution. As you know, that uh, in all fairness, um, we make it look, uh, the, the solution is simple, but at the, un under the hood, there are a lot of technicalities which are involved. You got to know your VXLAN, you got to know your LISP, you got to know your um, IGP, you got you got to know your security. There are a lot of pieces which are there. So in that case, uh, we would, uh, encourage you to to look into some of this information uh, to continue uh, getting uh, acquiring more vertical knowledge uh, when you're working on this uh, SDA solution. Another very important uh, piece of information is around SDA proposal templates. So when you're working with your customers, have check these uh, uh, three uh, proposal templates out, which will help you. Uh, in these for the uh, for the uh, DNA, DNA center for the D DNA uh, software and access switching and DNA software for wire access wireless so there's uh, Cisco has made some really nice uh, proposal templates which will be very useful for you uh, and give you sort of a jump start when you kind of putting that proposal together for your uh, customer uh, helping your account teams Another piece of information which Omer uh, has kind of gone in detail, this is again uh, just to kind of putting things uh, in, uh, in one place in module five, some of these references. Uh, so this is how you're going to access the, the instance, instant demo and can do those three demos. Uh, and if you're, you know, uh, kind of go through it on your own uh, one or two times, you will be uh, proficient enough that when you're at a customer site, you can have actually uh, a good one hour working session with the customer where you can talk about the whole uh, technology and show these three demos. And if the, and that could be, you know, between one hour to two hours. So in this um, uh, module or in this webinar series, we, we, we had almost, I think I would say, we talked around three hours altogether. 
um, but you can really now you have all the information and you go through all of this uh, on your own time then you can have this really good um, uh, intelligent um, a knowledgeable session with the demos I would say between one and two hours with your end customer and, and helping your account team closing that deal Another important piece of information which um, Omer covered in Module 4 um, is, uh, again, the ordering gu guide, the CCW tool. Um, you got to look at the promotions and the incentives, um, some really good information around SDA. Then again, uh, for this webinar, while we were sort of building this, there were, uh, we used a lot of information. There was the guidance from Cisco as well. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use this stuff what you can. Um, because the the real goal is to help the VAR community, your pre-sales uh, engineers, more comfortable with the SDA solution. So uh, we use some of this information from these links. Last but not least, uh, keep us in mind uh, that whenever uh, you're, we claim our year, we take a lot of pride in uh, being experts of three uh, Cisco SDX solutions, SDA and Campus and Branch, uh, SD van in, uh, uh, in the van, uh, main and, and ACI in the data center. So mainly we focus on uh, Viptela solution. Uh, and I think this is supposedly our last uh, slide. And I would stop over here. I see there are a lot of good questions that's been asked. Uh, most of the answers um, questions has been answered, but the, I think there may be some outstanding questions which we will make sure to get back to you uh, in uh, next couple of days uh, and uh, with that I will uh, pass this back to Vic uh, to uh, for uh, um, to take it from here Vic can you hear us Okay, so rest of the folks can hear me uh, in the panel. This is Joe. Vic might have stepped away for a minute. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Just want to wrap this up and say that the, we will be posting uh, the presentation and the recording to the uh, Tech Talk site, and we'll get the link out to everybody. And uh, thank you for attending today's session. Hopefully, you found this beneficial. And if there's any questions, please reach out to us, and we'll get the answers back to you as quickly as possible. So with that, I will uh, close out this session unless there's any additional questions. Looking through the Q&A, there doesn't seem to be anything that needs to be answered. I see there are a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Omer, are you looking at the, the questions? Uh, are there anything? One just popped in uh, about the Brownfield migration doc. Can that be shared? And there is a Brownfield migration doc that is available on Cisco.com, and uh, we'll make sure it's included in the. Uh, we'll answer the question and make sure the link's included uh, with our Q and A. Sure, sure, perfect. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Appreciate the uh, Netnology team uh, for a great job as well, and uh, hope you guys had a great, um, uh, uh, well worth your time to attending these two sessions. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you, sir. Bye now. Bye-bye.